Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, it's come to the end of March, uh, Wednesday, March the 31st, 2021. Glad you could join me today. We're continuing our journey through the parables of Jesus Christ in the Gospels. And we've come to a parable that has some substance to it to the point where I don't think I can cover off this particular parable in one food for thought. So I'm going to be splitting this in two and Lord willing, doing the second part of this parable on Friday. So today um, I'm talking to you about the parable of the lost son as recorded in Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 11. So if you have Bibles, if you'd like to turn there, we're going to be talking about two different sons. I, I think this parable, it's been termed as the parable of the lost son, but I, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, we could actually call this parable the parable of the two sons. One was lost and one stayed home. So we're going to talk about the lost son this morning. And if you have your Bibles, we'll start with Luke chapter 15, verse 11. In this parable, Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth with wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country, and sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, out starving to death. Now I will, sit, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him and ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So when we look at this parable, there's some, some really significant lessons. Now, the Bible says here, Jesus is telling us, that there was a man who had two sons, referring to God and two types of people that he wants to talk about. Now, the younger son uh, said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So the Lord gave him uh, some property to go out some inheritance to go out and to deal with on his own terms. Now, in the kingdom of God, we can't become a child of God unless we are born again in the spirit. So we're dead in our sins, and the scriptures tell us in Ephesians um, that it, it's by grace that we are saved through faith. It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we, we know that when we come into the family of God, we accept Jesus as our Savior. We ask Him to be our sin bearer, and we're cleansed of our sins, and we become alive in the Spirit. We become born again. We become children of God. So this parable, I believe, is talking to us about children of God, children that have come to know God as their Father. Now, so in this particular case, there is two sons in this story that's being told. One is an immature son. And this immature son, although he's born into his father's home, he sits at his father's table, he partakes of the protection of his father's household. Um, he has the joy of eating at his father's table and being fed all these spiritual provisions that his father offers. But like a child that's kind of spoiled. You ever have a scenario like that where you had, have had an immature child? I, I'm a father and there's times where my ch children have been immature and they take it for granted all the good things that you provide for them. The shelter, the security, the, the, the food. Um, 
they take that for granted and they and they don't appreciate it well this younger son didn't appreciate all the provisions given to him by his father his father was a king so this child was raised in a king's household and all the provisions of the king are rich he he's he's a rich king and he gives his family good provisions but this younger child had a restless spirit he longed for independence and and to uh to live his life um, the way that he wanted. Now, you see, part of being uh, in the family of God is that we're given tasks to do. In this particular realm, the tasks that we're given to do are to work in our father's vineyards and fields, working uh, to produce a harvest for the king's benefit. Now, the, the key note here is, Work. <laughs> work isn't always pleasant. Sometimes work is, is difficult. Sometimes we have to sweat and to strain when we're working. And um, this particular young son realized that he was uh, subject to an inheritance. Now, the inheritance is, if you put it on parallel, is eternal life in the kingdom that is to come that will never perish, spoil, or fade. A kingdom that is perfect, where there will not, not be no more pain or suffering or toil. That inheritance is a reward given to us by our Father in the end for being His children. Now, the inheritance is has been promised to us. So this son realizes that he has this eternal inheritance, this eternal life promise, but no, he wants heaven on earth now. He wants to live uh, the way that he wants to live now and experience the pleasures of heaven on earth as he sees it the way that he wants it right now. Now, not realizing all that he has, he decides to leave. And his father lets him go. His father actually gives him provisions and says, here's your life. Here's the provisions I've given you for your life. And he divides his kingdom between the son that stayed with him and the son that decided to go off and, and, and live the way he wanted. So this younger son goes far away from home. He leaves his father's household. You know, many people uh, who've known Christ for a period of time, they, they get restless and they want heaven on earth now. So they decide that they're going to, they get bored with serving the father in, in his kingdom and in his fields. And they, they want adventure, so they go off into the world to try and find some meaning on their own terms, squandering their inheritance, the inheritance of life that they've been given, on wild living, like this younger son did. This younger son squandered his inheritance on wild living and prostitutes and all kinds of things that were not pleasing to his father, that would not have been, the father would not have said, that's okay. That's good. No, he went and did things that he thought were, were best. And for, for a time, he enjoyed himself. And, and uh, he thought that he had all of his friends and they, that, they, that he was making a, a good go of it. And he didn't really realize that he was subject to a great deception. And the great deception is this, that there is uh, lasting, uh, there's lasting goodness away from God's kingdom out there in the world somewhere. And you just have to find it. So this young son, um, everything was going well until all of a sudden there was a famine. You know, there's times in life where there is a famine. And if you're in the father's household, the father gives you provisions and, and there's been, there's been, uh, that's been thought out. And uh, there's provisions to, to, to give us a good, life even in the midst of famine but out there away from the father's household it is a cruel world and all of a sudden this younger son realized that uh, things aren't all what they seemed to him on the first pl on the first point when he left his father's household as a matter of fact he was getting hungry and uh, he's in a foreign land and the the landowners of that land uh, he asked them to hire him with hopes that uh, maybe there'd be some provisions for him to satisfy the hunger of his soul. 
when he came to the end of himself. So, you know, out there, away from the Father's kingdom, we have the kingdom of darkness. And the owners of that kingdom, of the land in that kingdom, they will readily take you in if you are out there and uh, you're alone. He'll readily take you in, but you'll find yourself in a position where he wants you to feed his pigs. And uh, there is no love between that landowner and you. You are, you are, he is not your father, and he cares nothing for you. As a matter of fact, um, you'll find that you long to be fed by the food that the pigs are eating, but you'll find no satisfaction. You see, the devil always promises us uh, a shiny red apple to bite into. The, the shiny red apple of sin, but inside it's wormy, it's rotten, it's filled with gravel, and it's, it's not something that is good. As a matter of fact, it's horrible. And uh, there is no satisfaction in living for the devil because he will always double-cross you and he's always out for your destruction. He's a cruel taskmaster. And this, this younger son found himself working for this foreign landowner and uh, realizing that this guy who hired him had no care for him at all. He longed to fill his belly with the pods that the pigs were eating, but nothing was given to him. So, you know, a person might start out thinking that they can live the way they want and squander their life in wild living, but in the end you'll find that there's nothing to fill you with there will not be any satisfaction. I think there is an old Rolling Stones song that speaks of the sin man, and it says this, I, I can't get no satisfaction, always craving more but never being satisfied. Well, this guy ends up uh, working in, his, in, in, the, in the foreigner's land as a slave that he sold himself to, and uh, all of a sudden one day, comes to his senses and he's like, this is crazy. I am hungry. I am impoverished. Everything that I had is, is gone. It's spent. I am so wretched. What am I going to do? I can't keep going on like this. This is so meaningless and so hard. So this young son decides that he would ask for forgiveness from his father, maybe because his father's servants even had it better than he had it. And maybe he could ask for forgiveness for sinning against his father, come back home, and maybe God would at least allow him to be a servant in his household and not uh, treat him like a son even anymore because he didn't feel worthy. Um, the fact of the matter is that, uh, no, he wasn't really worthy. And in the natural sense, yeah, if he went to his father and asked for a position back, the father had the full right to say, yeah, well, you know, you, you, know, you don't even deserve to come into this household or y you, you can come in, but only as a servant and not as my child. And he had the full right to do this. But our father, uh, our heavenly father, you see, when we wander from him, he's always thinking about us. He's always longing to see us make the decision to come back home and to ask him to have mercy upon us and to ask him to become part of his household again. And uh, we never stop becoming his child once we're his child. But in, in this particular case, the, the son didn't understand the love of the father. He, he assumed that the father would just take him back as a slave or a servant and uh, wouldn't treat him like a son anymore. But when the father saw the son, the lost son, coming from a long ways away, um, his heart was filled with compassion. This is so much how God looks at us. When we mess it up, when we squander our inheritance with wild living, doing things that we shouldn't be doing, and we come to our senses and we come to God, he's waiting for us. He's longing for us to be part of his household again because we're his child. He loves us. So he's looking at this son coming down the road towards him and his heart's filled with compassion. 
And the son approaches the father and he's like, Father, I've sinned against you and against heaven. I've sinned. I've sinned. Can you please forgive me? Would you take me back? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I just want to be back as a servant. And what does God do? God wraps his arms around him and kisses him. You know, God wraps his arms around us and, and kisses us when we come home. He is filled with mercy and grace. This is our father. He's such a good father. He's much better than we are as children sometimes. So this father wrapped his arms around him, kissed his son, and, and tells his servants, go prepare a great feast. Bring the robe. Bring the ring. Put the ring on my son's finger. And not just, not just any robe. Bring the best robe. Bring it. Wrap it around him. The robe of righteousness. Wrap it around my son. For his clothes are soiled and and filled with holes, and uh, you know he wraps his arms around us. He fills us with his goodness, his righteousness, and asks us to come to his table where he throws a feast. Not just you know here's some bread and water. Like he he gets the fat and calf, and he welcomes us home. This this father of ours, the father is such a wonderful father. Do you see what I'm saying? Your heavenly father loves you. If you've wandered away and you've squandered your inheritance on wild living, and you've come to the point where you realize that there's nothing but gravel in your mouth instead of the fruit that the devil promised you that you thought that you would, you would go out and find. It's nothing but a mouthful of gravel. Spit the gravel out. Come to your Father. He loves you, and He's got a feast for you. You're hungry, and you're thirsty, and, and come to His table. And, and, you know, it, it's not a matter of earning his grace. It's not earned. You're a child of the king. And the king has, is a good king. And he has mercy upon his children when they wander away. And I'm not saying that we should use this as an excuse to go out and wander and do our own thing with the thought that we can come back anytime we want. No. That's not the point of this parable. The point is that when you come to your senses, come back home. There's food at the table for you that you can come back and you can be renewed in your spirit and, and come into right relationship with God. He is, his arms are open wide. He's longing for you to be with him. Um, he's your father. Just come home. So in this particular case, the welcoming party was extravagant. And God's extravagant love and welcoming party will be there for you. So come home. Well, that concludes the first part of my discussion on the parable of the lost son. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.